you've just got your new Chromebook in 2025 and are excited. What accessories should you get that's going to make your Chromebook more functional? I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. I've been a longtime Chromebook user since they actually came out and were available commercially. Let me talk today about five things that will make your Chromebook more functional as a senior. All right, you've got your shiny new Chromebook and you're all excited about it. The first thing you should consider is purchasing a USB hub. When you look at your Chromebook and you look along the side, you may see a lot of ports or you may see just a few. For example, in my Pixelbook, I had only two USB type C ports, one on each side. Whereas my new Asus Chromebook Plus has a whole bunch of ports, including an HDMI and Ethernet port on my Chromebook. Why do some Chromebooks have a few ports and some have a lot? It's not related to price. It's the design feature of the Chromebook. So if you have a Chromebook that's designed with the idea of being light and mobile, then probably you'll put few ports in there. If you have a Chromebook that you think might be more related to a desktop application, then you might put more ports in because it's going to be thicker and heavier. So it's really a philosophy and design feature of the manufacturer that makes that Chromebook. It has nothing to do really with the quality of the Chromebook. So in choosing, so when you have, when you're, when you have your uh, Chromebook, the first thing you should consider is a USB hub to expand those ports. Now there's nothing unique about this USB hub. This, uh, this is not a Chromebook USB hub. If you go and look on Amazon, which of course you're going to find most of these there, you'll find that these are available for not only PCs, but also Chromebooks. So there's nothing specific about this, although the newer Chromebooks that you have now will all have a type C connector. So you'll want to make sure that this end is a type C. If you have an older Chromebook, you may have a type A USB connector, and then you would want to get one of these devices with a type A connector here. So have a look at that before you make your purchase decision. The second thing you want to decide is, do you want one of these to be powered through? In other words, do you want to actually run power to your Chromebook so you can charge it? So if that is an issue, then you'll want to make sure there's a port on the other end, which is a power port where you can connect and charge your Chromebook through this device. Also, these devices can be daisy chained. So it is, it's the nice thing about a Chromebook is you can plug anything into it. It doesn't require drivers. Anything you plug into your Chromebook is by and large going to work and you can even daisy chain these out. And I don't, I don't know if there's any limit to the amount of devices that you can plug in. It just all works. And that's one of the great things about a Chromebook. So let's have a look at these devices and see which one you might purchase and also what features you're going to look for. So we're going to do that next. So let's look at this first um, USB port that I have. This is a type C connector. And on my, on this um, port, I have two USB 3.0 uh, connectors here. So I can add two devices that's USB 3 on the type A port here. So that, uh, that works well. The second is I have an HDMI connector. So HDMI ports are one of the things that we use to connect external monitors. So this is a good idea. If you're going to buy one of these, make sure it has an HDMI port, unless of course your Chromebook has an HDMI connector on the side. All right, as we come around, we see of course it has uh, a micro SD slot here for expanded memory. So you're, you can plug a gigabit into here. Like that's why I don't really worry too much about memory on Chromebooks. They typically have smaller hard drives, smaller memory on the machine, but who cares? Because you can put a one gig card in here and you've got all the space in the world. So, so, so think about an SD card reader uh, on here. You can, uh, th that's very important. The other thing that this does not have, which I would encourage uh, if you can find one, is to get one with an Ethernet connection. 
Now, why is that important? Well, if you're going to be sitting and your router is close to your Chromebook, wired is always faster than wireless. So you can easily take an Ethernet cord and plug it right from your, um, right from your router to your Chromebook. But if your Chromebook doesn't have an Ethernet port that you can plug it into, then again, your hub will be able to connect that and wired is always faster than wireless. So think about that when you're uh, purchasing this with some of these features. Now, how much should you pay for one of these? Well, that's a good question. Um, stay away from the really cheap ones because you'll find there's a lot on Amazon. So stay away for the, from the under $10 ones. Probably $30, $40 is what you would probably pay for one of these devices. Look for reviews. Some of them might even say compatible with Chromebooks. Uh, and also look, uh, maybe go on um, YouTube and do some searches on what are the top, top USB hubs of the time. So have a look around, do some shopping, but this is probably one of the first devices that you're going to want to buy for your new Chromebook. So the second thing you need to purchase as a senior is a monitor. Let's go bigger. If you're having any visual problems, let's connect something bigger, like a larger monitor. I always suggest when you're purchasing your Chromebook that you stick to a 14 or 15 inch screen. You will find some Chromebooks, not many, will be a 17 inch screen. Now, the reason I don't recommend 17 inch screens uh, for any laptop is because of course, it takes a lot more power to run those extra pixels and 17 inches isn't big enough. I wanna see a much bigger screen. So let's just stick to the 14 or 15 inch and you'll find that the battery life will be a lot better. And let's just plug a monitor in. Yes, plug a monitor into your Chromebook. And you probably have a monitor sitting around the house. I say bigger the better. I have a bunch of monitors here, and they're all 34 inches. But whether it's a 27, 32, or 34, just plug it in to your Chromebook, and you will have a much bigger screen. Oh, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Yes, what happens if you only have a Type-C port on your Chromebook? Or suppose, for example, you go and look around at the house and you find some weird connectors. Yes, there's things called display ports. Well, just a minute, how do I take a display port off my monitor and plug it into my Chromebook? Well, there's some adapters that will be needed, but most monitors will have an HDMI out and you can connect that onto your Chromebook. And remember, if you don't have an HDMI port, well, guess where you can get one? Yes, the hub. So we can plug anything we want in there. So the bigger, the better. Go with 34 inches. Plug your Chromebook in, you'll have this great big screen. But if you want to go, let's go 80 inches. Let's go really big because all Chromebooks come with a casting feature that automatically will connect to your TV. And so you can cast your Chromebook to your TV and you can even get a bigger screen if you want. So bigger is better. All right, the third thing that you should consider, somewhat controversial, but is a mouse. Yes, a mouse. Why do I say that somewhat controversial? Well, let me give you some advice. This is good advice that I got from a very experienced Chromebook user. Learn how to use the trackpad on your Chromebook. Now, you may not know this, but your trackpad is divided up into sections. And depending on where you touch that trackpad, it does different things. You didn't know that, did you? You're probably just using one finger and moving it around the trackpad. The other thing on a Chromebook, there's a one finger swipe, a two finger swipe, and a three finger swipe, all of which do something different. So learning how to use your trackpad is very important. And it took me a while. It's a, it's a learning curve that you have to do. But if you spend the time on it and you learn how to use it properly, then you will not need a mouse. Now, I still use this mouse uh, for if I'm doing video editing or something a little more complex that I don't do all the time. But for all the regular things I use my Chromebook for, I just use the trackpad. But if you want to go and you want to purchase a mouse, there's three options for you. So the first type of mouse that you can buy is, of course, a wired mouse. You've probably got lots of those sitting around from days gone by, and you can plug those in. 
and it works great. They just plug into a USB port and you can use a wired mouse, not a problem. Oh, did I say USB port? Well, <laughs> you might need a hub, right? So you're going to run short on ports. Uh, so the second type of mouse that you can use is that more traditional type that's been around for many years, and that's where it has the USB transmitter. It's a little transmitter that plugs into a, a USB port on your PC, and of course that sends a radio signal out that uh, controls your mouse, and that makes the mouse a wireless mouse. Works fine, no problem, but again, it's going to take up a USB port. What uh, I use in this, uh, this mouse is, of course, a Bluetooth mouse. You can buy these. Uh, they're inexpensive. Uh, you can buy a Bluetooth mouse and connect it to your Chromebook via Bluetooth, which does not use a port and will work very well for you. Uh, the, this one is made by Logitech, and I think I paid about $24 for it. Please don't go out and spend $80 or $90 because of a Bluetooth mouse. You should be able to find these for under $20. They're not very expensive and they will easily connect with your Chromebook and not require a port. But of course, please learn how to use your trackpad. Learn how to use your trackpad. Learn how to use your trackpad. That's the best advice I can give you. Now, the fourth thing you should consider for your Chromebook is a stylus pen. This only works on specific Chromebooks. Mostly it's a Chromebook that's going to flip. In other words, it's going to open up on top of itself into a tablet. Now, if you have one of those Chromebooks, it's sort of cool because when you flip it over on and make it a tablet, there's lots of cool things you can do. First of all, the operating system changes to a tablet form. And one of the things you can do is you can write in the tablet. And also, it transcribes it into text. So you can actually scribble along and write your notes, and it's going to transcribe it into actually a text character in which you can edit it, do all sorts of things, correct it, and send it off or add it to documents. It works extremely well. One of the great features of a Chromebook, and you'll be amazed at how accurate it is. You know, how it takes scribble and makes it into text is pretty cool, and it works well. So if you do have one of those devices that flips onto itself and is a tablet, can turn into a tablet, then for sure get a pen, get a stylus pen, try it out and see how it works. Sometimes your Chromebook will come with one, uh, but you might have to purchase it. It's, uh, it's pretty, it works pretty cool. I'd give it a try. Now, the fifth and last thing you should consider for purchasing with your Chromebook is, of course, expanded memory. Now, the philosophy of Chromebooks is that the memory is not important because most of the services you're going to be using, including Google Drive, is stored in the cloud. But there may be specific reasons why on your Chromebook you would like more memory. They tend to have a lower amount of memory compared to PCs. So very easy. Now your Chromebook may come with a micro SD card slot in the Chromebook, which makes it easy. Then all you do is you can purchase extra memory. You can get to up to a gigabit or more of memory now that's so cheap, and you just pop that into the Chromebook. Or guess what? <laughs> a hub, right? <laughs> Remember the hub. Yes, you can use the hub to expand your memory as well. So those are ways in which you can get more memory on your Chromebook. And again, sky's the limit, really. So in summary, there's five things that seniors should consider in 2025 to add as an accessory to their Chromebook. The first, of course, is a hub. It will offer more versatility for you. The second, of course, is a larger monitor or even casting it to your TV. The third is a mouse. But remember, let's learn how to use a trackpad. The fourth would be a stylus pen. We can now if you can turn your Chromebook over and use it as a notepad, cool things we can do with a pen. And of course, the last is expanding your memory if you require, and that it can be done through a micro SD card or adding it to your hub. So hopefully you'll have a lot of fun with your new Chromebook in 2025. 
I've had a lot of fun over the years with my various Chromebooks and look forward to new features this year with AI and Chromebooks. I'll be producing regular videos about Chromebooks. You can keep in touch by, you know, that like and subscribe. So until we see you again, have a great day. And again, enjoy your Chromebook.